Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week is part two of JCB's Card Cutouts video series. This time he's going to talk about how to export the files from Illustrator into SVGs that are necessary for the laser cutting of the Game Crafter, and also discuss a couple of these for the different miniatures bases available that you can use to more properly display your minis. So let's dive right in and see what he has to say. Hi, I'm JCB Gaming. Today I'll teach you how to create the cut files for your custom punch out models using the art files from our last video and Inkscape. Let's begin. First, open the SVG template from the Game Crafter using Inkscape. Next, import the file named Cut from our last video. Align the image named Cut with the paper. Create a new layer and name it Keep. Move the file named Cut to the new layer named Keep. Delete the layer named Delete. Next, click on Path and then click Trace Bitmap. This will open a new window. Click OK. Then hit Ctrl F. This will open the Fill and Stroke window. Under Fill, click the X. Under Stroke, click the Fill the In Box. Click off to the side of the paper, then click back on the one of the black shapes. Make sure to click on the center. Hit delete. Save the files in SVG. Open the file in the SVG editor in Component Studio or use Zavu's online SVG editor. Select 90 for the DPI. Go to Sequence Path and click on the small circles with numbers. These indicate the order of lines will the order the lines will be cut. Reorder them in the path to make so that they make sense. Go to split into equal parts, then type in three under the number of parts. Click on the number of circle numbered circle to split the cut lines into three equal parts and save as an SVG open your game and open the correct punch out in the Game Crafter. Enable the UV coating and click Add a Placeholder. Click on the cut and import your cut lines. Type in 90 when prompted. Import the front and back images, and then click the eye icon to view your image and with the cut lines. Mm -hmm. 
The old models are now ready to order. This is JCB Gaming, signing out. Hi, I'm JCB Gaming, and today we'll be talking about different bases you can use for miniatures. Let's begin. There are three different types of bases that you can use. Sandy, acrylic, and chipboard stud. Let's start with the pros and cons for the sandy bases. Sandy bases were the first type of base I used and are, as, and are simple to create. The Game Crafter includes three different sizes of sandies as well, or you can create your own using custom cutouts. This can be an easy place to start when creating minis. I have found that sandies lack a professional feel for the game for game minis, especially for those that use them for tabletop war games. They are alright for as gaming pieces such as player pawns for board games, but look unprofessional in tabletop board games and we can do much better than the basic standy base. However, they are a great starting point when prototyping games because of how easy they are to create and how cheap they are to use. Next, we'll look at acrylic bases. Acrylic bases work well for tabletop minis as they come in two main varieties. Solo base mode for minis that require a single base and unit base mode for units that, for large units of minis. Solo bases work well for single models and tabletop games similar to War Machine slash Hordes where individual models may make separate moves. The unit bases work well for tabletops similar to Warhammer where the models work together as a single unit. Acrylic bases are easy to use and are cheap to produce. However, they come in one size and can only fit cardstock minis and not chipboard. If you're doing a game with only human sized minis, this will work very well. However, anything requiring a base larger than a humanoid model, such as a dragon or tank, you will have to use chipboard bases. Chipboard stud bases are the hardest to create and use. However, they give uh, you a professional feel and their greatest strength is that they can give you the most customizability. While not as durable as acrylic bases, the customization you can accomplish with chipboard more than makes up for this. I haven't had a problem with the durability of the bases yet, and since many itself will be produced of chipboard or cardstock, the durability is not a problem. The base life should will match the, or surpass that of the miniature. Customization that chipboard bases allow for will let you design your base not only for humanoid sized models, but for models on a larger scale such as tanks or dragons. The chipboard stud bases are the only option for models made of chipboard because of this I have to recommend using chipboard stud bases. There is one problem however, small chipboard models with stud bases will only work about 70% of the time. For example, we'll just punch this one out, and you can see it's got a little stud, be very difficult one-handed. Well, most of the time they'll go in easy like that, 30% of the time they will break, and we'll, you'll have to use glue to glue them together. While gluing is a solution, there is a better way for smaller models. Use cardstock models with chipboard stud bases. To do this, you create a base similar to the acrylic base with a bend on the base and the stud hole to hold the cardstock minis. I use a 0.5 millimeter wide hole with a 15% bend in the center. And they work really well and hold together. and will work for wargaming. In conclusion, I would use the Sandies in your new design minis and are working and are working on a prototype. The acrylic bases if all your models are the same size and the chipboard stud bases using cardstock models for similar units or for smaller units and chipboard models for larger units. Thanks for watching. This is JCB Gaming signing out. My favorite part of this video was 
Aside from JCB giving all of his insights and opinions so that I don't have to, were the different shapes that we saw and how they all looked on the table for us to see. Those card cutouts are very versatile and I'd love to see what you come up with for your future prototypes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on all of our future content. As always, I'm Ben. This has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint. And together, let's build something great.